Hello again and welcome back to another video build. This time around, we'll be making a simple solution for swapping out the different filters on your spray booth. Hope you enjoy it. It's been a couple of years now since I made this simple cardboard spray booth. And judging by all the positive feedback we got from it, it seems a lot of you fellow makers out there really appreciated this and made your own box. And even better, tweaked it to suit your specific hobbies. Personally, I've pretty much been using it on every single project I've done since. I believe it's due to the fact that it's so easy to hook it up, use it, and just as quickly put it away again. But I do have this one thing I wish I could improve on it, the airbrush filters. They can be a bit expensive in the long run, simply because they work so well and clog up pretty fast. That's all depending on what types of paints or other mediums you might use, of course. So, a better way to do this, not to mention it's a lot cheaper and customizable, is to buy the filters in bulk. Simply some big rolls of whatever filter you'll need. So first off, you'll have to decide on what type of filter that will work best with your setup. I'll show you what I usually use and why I use it, of course, but I strongly recommend that you do some research on this subject yourself as well. As for my setup, I'm really satisfied with using this stuff. It's a two-layer high-density fiberglass filter, and it's by far the most commonly used for homemade paint booths. Just type in airbrush filters on Amazon, and there's a whole variety you can choose from. If we stick with the measurements from the original blueprints I made for the booth, we can simply start by cutting down these big sheets to some smaller squares we'll be needing. And once that is done, we'll only be needing a way to hold the filter in place. If I had done this just a few years back, we might have been looking at a way to use some PVC pipes with a sort of a mesh attached to it to hold the filter in place. But luckily, these days, I believe every maker has access to a 3D printer. So of course, I turned to Fusion 360. And this is what I ended up with. This simple design has one back and one front side. And the intent, of course, is to keep the filter locked in place between them. I made sure to put in a locking mechanism, as this will help with lining them up perfectly, and even make them a bit more sturdy. I also made it possible so that you can insert a 10 mm thick filter as well as up to 22 mm without any other adjustments. This will really come in handy. I'll explain more about it towards the end. I have of course uploaded all these files to Thingiverse, so you can just go on and grab them for free if you want. Or if you want to support the things we do on this channel, you can give a super thanks on this video. I also made sure to make two versions of this, one where the design is split in two, and one where it's split into four pieces. This is of course to include those of you with slightly smaller print beds. We printed out all the parts on our Neptune 3 Max, and this was actually one of the first prints we did on this machine. So, without having done anything special to the printing profiles yet, I have to say, they came out looking pretty clean. There's obviously no need to add supports for any of the parts, but I did add a slight brim to the outside. But with the right tools for the job, they are easily sliced away, so we are left with a nice clean edge. To begin the assembly, I lined up the parts and then I started to snap in all the small locks. And as you can tell from the sound of it, they were a really tight fit. So much so, in fact, that the only thing left was to apply some super glue. I did a couple of passes on each side, and that actually seemed to be all that was needed because they felt more than tough enough 
for the purpose that we're meant for. I was really eager to test them out, so I actually forgot to attach the handles the first time. But that's a quick fix. And with the filter in place, I could tell right away this was going to work. You see, on this scale, the high density of the filter gives it more than enough strength to stand upright. It's actually more of a question of not applying any pressure to it. Because if you compress the filter, it will diminish the airflow by a lot. And you won't get the effect we're looking for. We simply want the filter to remain fluffy, making sure the air passes through it and filtering out as much of the overspray as it can with your airbrush. Since we stuck with the dimensions from the previous blueprints, the filter cassette fit perfectly and I could still simply use the rubber bands to hold it in place. Now for the important part, does it work or not? Yes, most definitely. I'm not sure if this will give a good demonstration of it, but I did do some quick airbrushing on a couple of failed resin prints. This is definitely not how I usually airbrush, because I laid down the paint pretty thick. Even did a couple of blowbacks. That's basically the thing you do sometimes for unclogging your airbrush, and this will create a massive paint overspray, just to see if the filter catches it. I've been using this in my spray booth for quite some time now, and I believe I've been going through two or three filters by now. I even unhooked my ventilation fan, just to look for any differences from when I used the pre-made store-bought filters, and I couldn't really tell the difference, because it was all clean. As you can tell from the direction I was holding my airbrush, the filter has caught quite a lot of the massive overspray. You can actually easily tell if something is off by rubbing your hand against the different surfaces inside your spray booth. And if your hands get covered in fine dust coats of cured paint, well, then something isn't working right. But in my case, it was all nice and clean. The result, of course, may depend on the setup you have. I believe I explained how my spray booth is hooked up in the previous video. But I do still get a lot of questions about this. So here's a quick illustration of how my spray booth works. The vacuum chamber sucks out all the air from the spray booth through the filter. This again goes up the air duct, eventually passing through my ventilation fan, before eventually it all ends up outside my house. That means I simply need a filter that will protect my ventilation fan. On the other hand, for whatever reasons there might be, some people have a totally different setup. That brings me back to the thing I mentioned about this being customizable. Since we made this thing as a holding cassette, you can basically combine all sorts of different filters. But as for what filter that would be the right choice for you, well, I can't answer that, because as I explained it, that all depends on your setup. But I'm sure with a little fact-finding trip, you'll find a safe, practical solution to go with. Either way, I believe that was it for this video build. So, even if you're a beginner or an expert, we do hope you found this somewhat enjoyable and maybe useful. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell, and we will try and share our next build with you. Thank you for watching.